on Billboard tonight, Strictly Stars, Kevin and Joanne Clifton, Trip the Light Fantastic, a triple bill from crime writer Michael Nags, and Emily Blunt finds another quiet place. <music> Welcome to Billboard with me, Ted Stanley, for our regular roundup of cultural events in Lincolnshire and East Yorkshire which this month is sadly characterised by the closure of many entertainment venues across the region. Our thoughts are with the company's staff, artists and volunteers whose lives have been affected by this current crisis. To cater for anyone staying at home, we have included plenty of things you can still enjoy, including the latest film and book releases, online dancing lessons with the Cliftons and how to write a short story with Hammond House. The Hessel Theatre Company have been hard at work rehearsing for their most ambitious show yet, Shrek the Musical. Tony Barker caught up with the actors Russell Fallon and Sarah Brody and the director Martin Bowman. I guess we're used to putting on big shows, but Shrek is, is massive, probably one of the biggest shows we've ever undertaken, and we've got a big cast. Uh, and lots of technical challenges this time. I think we've got 126 costumes, 20-foot flying dragon, prosthetics for Shrek, his parents, baby Shrek. Um, yeah, it's a huge show to undertake. We've got lots of fairy tale characters to costume um, and lots of big production numbers. But uh, it's a challenge, but it's an enjoyable one. It's a really fun show and we've got a great cast, so it's worth all the hard work. Shrek's a dream part. Why wouldn't you want to do Shrek? Shrek's brilliant. Uh, I've, I've discovered Shrek probably about three, four years ago, the musical, and it was one of them that you, I played and instantly fell in love with. It's just an amazing piece of theatre. It's, it's bright, it's fun, it's loud, it's larger than life. It's literally cartoon. That's how, I mean, you couldn't describe it any better than it's cartoon. Uh, and the, what's interesting is some of the times when you see shows and things that get put on on, on stage, Things are turned down a little bit for the stage because they've got to because it's real life and this isn't. This is turned up. My character kind of goes between being a princess and not being a princess um, and that's where my quick changes come into play. So it's, there's a few times where that happens and I think I'm going to need a team of people to help me transform back and forth. <laughs> Unfortunately, the performance at Whole New Theatre in April has been postponed, but their efforts will not be in vain and we will keep you up to date with news of future performances. Inspired by nature writers Jay Barker and Robert McFarlane, photographer Peter Heaton has been exploring the Yorkshire Wolves, recording sounds and taking photographs. Tony Barker went to meet him. It's basically work that I've done in the, in the Yorkshire Wolves uh, and it's landscape photography, but it's landscape photography that has an additional aspect, which is a text overlay or a series of text overlays, which is trying really to get to the, the idea that when you walk through a landscape, you can spend a whole day there, you come away with one photograph. The photograph doesn't tell you what you experience, such as red kites flying just out of sight, the, the sort of smells, the sounds of the birds. So I've tried to, to do that. And also about what you're thinking out there, because it's you know, being out in the landscape is, is a very sort of calming thing to do and it really does take your mind away from any worries you have and so I've tried to look at the idea of a, an internal landscape and what you're thinking and how that's reflected in an external landscape. How special does it feel to you though to have your work on display here at the Treasure House? I see it's wonderful it's a great honour to be able to put all the work up together and it's it's work that I've had for a while and I've been developing and to see it all eventually come to fruition with the large images I've done some sound pieces as well because I've always worked with sound so I've taken birds song from the Yorkshire Walls, typical birds from the Yorkshire Walls such as the skylarks, the red kites, owls, all sorts of different birds and I've made sound pieces that relate to each one of those birds so there are eight sound pieces on something called the listening post so you can not only see the walls you can get an experience of what it sounds like in the walls as well. Now something you can enjoy without leaving home, a Holborn cry writer Michael Nags started out to write a novel and ended up writing a trilogy. Tony Barker went to meet him. It's been a lifelong ambition to be a writer. Why, I'm not sure, but um, it's always been something that I wanted to do. I've, I had a great career with, uh, with Kellogg Company and I've never regretted any of that, but 
um, I was still uh, I still have enough brain cells when I actually retired to to do what I always wanted to do and that was to be a writer and I'd had the story uh, building up for a long time in my mind so I was ready to go once I had retired perhaps too long building up in my mind because it ended up not with a single book but it ended up with a trilogy a sort of an accidental trilogy let's look at the trilogy then the latest one is uh, lost souls that you've been doing the signings for of late in uh, east yorkshire this this is all about stemming from your personal views and issues on crime and law and order isn't it and uh, uh, a reflection on political strife and civil life as well so it's, it's all a bit dramatic yeah it's, it is really um the the main character is a politician and the political element of it is really what happens to him as a person rather than as a politician but there is in, in the first novel uh, catalyst was about law reform law reform um in order to um, deal with more effectively with street violence and, and drug related crime which is something that I think as you get older you feel more and more intimidated about um, so there's a lot of my views in the book um, but the, really it's about what happens to the politician having driven this law reform through and having trying to drive it through too far and think, things falling apart for him so it's mainly a crime um, trilogy um, but it has got this strong political thread and there are a lot of um, my own thoughts in there. It's a vehicle for for being a grumpy old man in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> and your latest yeah. work is called Lost Souls. That sounds like a, a cry for help. Yeah, well, that's true, yeah. Um, that That's really how... I don't want to give too much away, too many spoilers, but that's, <laughs> that's kind of where he unravels completely and then tries to build the bridges back to his to his old life. Um, so there's a very big finish, which is kind of out of context with the, the rest of the, um, of the trilogy. Uh, the, the climax of Lost Souls is something I'm particularly pleased with because it's a, it's a kind of an epic hostage rescue type oh. thing. All Michael's books in the Hotel St Kilda trilogy are available at Matador and Amazon. Now, here with his choice of more book releases, our favourite journalist and broadcaster, Hugh Richards. Emma Jane Unsworth's new novel, Adults, is really a satire on modern life, vicarious existence on social media, constant pretense and the indispensable art of lying. Our heroine lives a life online of happiness and fulfilment, but in reality she is lonely and unloved, and understandably so. Unsworth depicts the modern reality as funny, savage and absurd. Everybody will recognise some of their own experience in this book. In Difficult Women, Helen Lewis provides a history of feminism. She avoids the temptation to record the heroic campaigners, the great figures we can all admire and like. Lewis gives us the awkward, dangerous and sometimes violent women who campaign for liberty and equality. An advocate of bombings, the founder of refuges who changed her mind to fight for men's rights, the betrayed wife wrongly accused of seducing the Prime Minister. Lewis provides a fascinating account of the obscure history of feminism and, of course, she argues that the struggle is far from over. John Burko seems to be a fast writer. He stepped down as Speaker of the House of Commons only last October, but he's already produced Unspeakable, his account of 23 years in the House of Commons, the last 10 in the chair. He was controversial and made many enemies, most of whom he describes with some relish. He discusses the perils of keeping order in disorderly times. It's not objective history, but it is an intriguing account of how one prominent politician wishes to be remembered. What would happen if the planet Earth stopped turning? We'd lose day and night. One half of the world would forever face the sun, the other eternal cold and darkness. In the last days, Andrew Hunter Murray has imagined this disaster. It's an ugly fight for the light, and according to the author, the science is not impossible. <laughs> Thank you, Hugh. In other literary news, Hammond House Publishing will shortly be releasing a series of online workshops in creative writing, so you can learn the secrets of storytelling at home. And entries are now open for the annual Hammond House International Literary Prize awarded by the University Centre Grimsby. 
which this year has a somewhat prophetic theme, survival. I think climate change is something that's on everybody's mind and as individuals we can all contribute in small ways that together can make a big difference. But I think writers can perhaps consider doing more than that. There's lots of people telling us about climate change, what's happening, all the research, but what writers can do is put that into a human context by telling their stories using climate change as a backdrop, as a setting for their stories. And whether you're a songwriter, whether you're a playwright, whether you're an author, making people understand what the human consequences of that problem are, uh, particularly for the future and for future generations, I think something that writers can probably do better. And that's really our challenge this year for our writers, is to tell those stories. Our theme for the International Literary Prize this year is survival. And we hope that might encourage people to use uh, climate change and the environment as a backdrop. If they write them, then our role is to make sure that we publish them and that we circulate them worldwide so everyone in the world can read them. With no music review this month, there's a reminder of one of the most popular guests from 2019, playing live in the Billboard studio, the very talented Katie Spencer. No, no, I'm not sleeping, child. I ain't sleeping, oh, you know. Hey, you're gonna find me crying. After the break, passion and precision in Georgia, a remote exhibition in Yorkshire, and music of a very different genre. Another town, wherever I have been, ever I have been and gone, ever I have gone, the blues they follow me down. There are something like 4,000 businesses in North East Links in a relatively compact county area. We want to talk to more of these businesses as time goes on because we're able to bring in funding which in turn increases their trading ability and expansion. It's all the good stuff, all, you know, all positive and, and helping businesses to grow, create jobs. Established in 2016 by North East Lincolnshire Council, the Investment Hub is an important part of the Council's strategy to support the growth of local business. We sit with the business, we find out what they're looking at doing and from our database and our knowledge of finance uh, we put them together with appropriate funders. The team of experienced banking professionals including Anthony Wynne, Sarah Bratton and Ian Girdley provide a free service to identify sources of funding that can help companies grow and prosper. If you think you can benefit from this valuable service for business in North East Lincolnshire contact Becky Darnell on 07921 562 500 or email info at investmenthubnel.org.uk Coming up on tonight's show, we experience augmented reality and trip the light fantastic with Strictly Stars Kevin and Joanne Clifton. But first, a warm welcome back to Sarah Hunter Carson with a review of some of the latest film releases chosen by film critic Paul Lewis. On film review tonight, John Krasinski's sequel to A Quiet Place, Passion and Precision in And Then We Danced, and live action adventure in Sonic the Hedgehog. But first, 
Baccarat, a disquieting horror-style western delivered with ruthless clarity by Brazilian directors Kleber Mendonça Filho and Juliana Dornelles. After the death of her grandmother, Teresa returns to her matriarchal village in a near-future Brazil to find a town under siege from a mysterious threat. There's so much you can do with a knife. This world is upside down. And Then We Danced, directed by Levin Atkin, is a passionate tale of love, love and liberation set among the conservative confines of modern Georgian society. Merab is a devoted dancer who has been training for years with his partner Mary for a spot in the National Georgian Ensemble. The arrival of another male dancer, Irakli, throws Merab off balance, sparking both an intense rivalry and romantic desire. <laughs> Directed by John Krasinski, A Quiet Place 2 stars his wife, Emily Blunt, in this sequel that follows the surviving members of the Abbott family, Evelyn and her children, as they face the terrors of the outside world. Forced to venture into the unknown, they realise that the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats lurking beyond the sand path. <laughs> Our family choice tonight is Sonic the Hedgehog, a live action adventure comedy based on the global blockbuster video game. Sonic and his new friend, small town sheriff Tom Wachowski, go face to face with the evil Dr. Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey. A bit of nostalgia, a lot of action, and plenty of fun for the kids. That was an illegal left, by the way. Oh, this one is cute. Let's keep him. Oh, come on! You've got car insurance, right? Why would you throw your life away for this silly little alien? Good time. He's my friend. Let's go! This is my power. And I'm using it to protect my friends. Let's go! Let's go! On DVD and Blu-ray, Come Drink With Me from 88 Films, Magic from Second Sight and Kansas City from Arrow Academy are also worth a look. Remote is a highly unusual and exciting exhibition featuring a replica drone control room and a number of augmented reality scenarios, challenging our ideas around power and control. Tony Barker spoke to artist Annabelle McCourt. Basically, I'm from Lincolnshire, and in Lincolnshire they actually have um, ground control stations where RAF pilots will be controlling drones, perhaps flying over Syria. And I wanted to question people's kind of detachment from that process, and hence the name remote, and are we feeling desensitised from what's actually going on in the world? So not only do we have a massive, great sort of uh, drone control station in the gallery, 
which was no mean feat. False walls had to come down, etc. There is a vast sign, um, a theatre sign from the Stephen Joseph Theatre in Scarborough, and in this context, it's actually known as Theatre of War. So I've taken that, I've appropriated it, and I've given it its own dialogue. And not calling it quits there, we also have uh, augmented reality, which create different scenarios on the inside of the ground control station. I also see people walking around with iPads. What's on there? What are they doing? Okay, there's a series of uh, works so they can engage with the ground control station in a very different way. So instead of having RAF pilots on the inside of there, there are very different scenarios occurring. So first of all, there's a game where we have a little satellite ground control station, which is tiny really small and that's living at the Rotunda Gallery in Scarborough. So on one of the games the drone flies out of the top of the Rotunda Gallery and you can bomb your way all the way to Hull. No bombing on campus but it's basically to kind of think of that again desensitisation of war and kind of putting a western context on what is a global problem. World champion dancers Strictly Stars Kevin and Joanne Clifton have been proud ambassadors for their hometown of Grimsby putting it firmly on the map and on the dance floor. Despite their fame and fortune, they have never forgotten their roots, taking time from their busy schedules to support local charities and their family's famous dance academy. <laughs> I caught up with proud parents Keith and Judy to find out more about their celebrity children and their famous dance academy. My parents were publicans and they had um, the Clee Park Hotel and I had a brother and one day they found him in one of the uh, bar areas playing dominoes with some of the punters when he was eight and they said, we're not having this, not having them growing up in the pub life. So um, they took us everywhere to get him involved in things, one of which was ballroom dancing. So I was taken along there as well and I never stopped. I went down to London to further my dance education and I didn't want to come home. So I went to my f another dancer friend's house to stay for a while and Keith was her brother. And that's how we met. Um, I started early teens down at the local dance school because my parents were dancing down there and there was a huge preponderance of females to, to boys and I just sat there thinking this is not such a bad idea really. So I didn't actually start because I wanted to dance. I just it was the girls. The, just joined the class you know. Judy was in the top 12 in ballroom and we won our titles in Latin American. We were effectively the world number one. We, we, we danced in South Africa, all over Europe, America, um, which was great. You know, yeah. we, had, we had a life that was, that was, that was travelling. And that's when we decided really that, you know, we could live anywhere we liked. And so we decided to come back to Grimsby from living in London, because I'm a Londoner. To be near my parents. To be near really. Judy's parents. We had to use our talents in some way. Yeah. So, so we decided that, that we would have some kind of dance One, school. Two, three. We go out to the community, that, which makes it easier for them to come to us. Teens. So we've got children's classes, we've got adult classes. and, and Yeah, from three-year-olds uh, to about... 83. They're going to be fabulous. They've taken up the Clifton's Dance Academy 421 Challenge because they're the most energetic kids in the whole world. Are you ready? Yeah! Here we go! One, two, three, one, two, three, one, Like we've got one class that's been going 15 years. When they first all came in, nobody knew each other. Now they all go on holidays together and dancing and everything, don't they? It's wonderful. Yes, and uh, they've intermarried. <laughs> there's uh, <laughs> wife swapping. <laughs> there's... Every parent should have pride in whatever achievements that their children do. Yeah. Now, ours have done really, really well, and they're very high profile. I would think it was in their genes, do you they, know? They had, <laughs> they had my talent and good looks to start oh. with. Um, well, they've got my brains. No, your brains. I'll let you have your brains, because I've still got mine. Right, okay. 
<laughs> we knew that they, they could dance from a very early stage. And so we de just decided that we would back them, you know, and, and the, the competition world was what we knew. And we said, if you follow that line, we can help you. You know, if you want to come out of it, come out of it. But, you know, we understand this route. And we, we ended up sending Joanne out to Italy, to the, to the biggest school. The best in, school. The, the best school in, in Europe. And she stayed there for 14 years and eventually became World Ball Champion. Kevin got up to about seven, seventh. seventh in the world, you know, so he in was Latin. doing exceptionally Latin, well. And then he, he found Burn the Floor, which is the best dance show ever, anywhere, and, and decided to go into that side of performing dance. And Kevin was called Kevin from Grimsby on Strictly, which had an impact back onto Grimsby. It's, it said to 12 million people, Grimsby, and now they're both appearing with Burn the Floor, the group of dancers called Burn the Floor, at the auditorium. So it's, it's, it's come out and it's come mm -hmm. back together again. We are absolutely wetting ourselves in anticipation um, <laughs> of, of this Burn the Floor performance, because Burn the Floor is brilliant anyway. But then we've got Kevin on it, we've got Joanne on it. Both headlining it. Both headlining it. It's, it's, it's called, going to um, be massive. Anything you can do. It's, it's going to be massive. Burn the Dance Floor was due to play at Grimsby Auditorium in May, but is now postponed until the auditorium reopens later this year. Unfortunately, Clifton's community dance classes are also on hold, but if you're stuck at home, here's a great opportunity to keep fit and well by learning to dance with the Clifton Academy online. So, Mum and Dad had this idea to take Clifton Dance Academy online. So we've decided to create online dance lessons for everyone to experience, learn in the comfort of their own home um, and to make it as accessible as possible to anyone who wants to learn. Because let's be honest, it's not just us who doesn't have time. It is all people who like work long hours or have children to look after and they can't get to dance classes themselves or they may be a little bit embarrassed to go to a dance class. With these online lessons, then they can learn in the comfort of their own home, just taking their own time, don't have to do it in front of anyone. So these lessons are going to give you an understanding of each of your favourite dances. They're going to give you confidence if you're invited to a wedding or even at your own wedding. Confidence that you know how to dance if, if you have to. And also you're going to have a lot of fun with it. We love ballroom dancing, we find it fun and we hope you're going to as well. So get out them dancing shoes. And start dancing. In view of the developing situation, check with organisers of events featured in tonight's show to ensure they are still running and please take all recommended precautions to stay safe and well. We are hoping to continue broadcasting throughout the crisis to keep people updated on the entertainment activities that are available and to be there to support the venues and artists as they emerge from the current shutdown. If you would like us to feed your own event or updates on Billboard, you can email details to news at billboardtv.uk. Well, that's almost all for tonight's show. You can keep up to date with the latest entertainment news on our Facebook page. And to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes, click the subscribe button below. To close tonight's show, we have reprised one of the most popular acts ever to appear on Billboard, the amazing Ben Portsmouth. Well,